So let's talk about some trading, shall we? So are you using the same trading strategies now uh, that you currently have been using or have you adjusted your trading strategy due to the market? Yeah, great question. Uh, I mean, I was talking to Stock Club about Saturday and I made an adjustment. So like I may widen my stop um, because now because of stop hunting, brokerages having issues um, and the market being a little bit faster. I've talked about it before, but like if you're short in the market on a daily session, I will put my stop at the top of the market. And if I'm going long, I'll put it at the bottom and I'll give it a little bit more. Again. So if I'm going for 500 ticks on NASDAQ, I may wait till 100, 150 ticks to lock in profit as before I may, may have locked in 40. And because like the market is moving so fast now or you get out of moves, you, at some point you have to adjust. It's like the speed of trading has changed over the last couple months. And um, no one is really saying it, but the impact of my Forex funds going under his hat has been dramatic in the Forex and futures market. Like the, it changed liquidity and a, a lot of other uh, prop firms on watch to if they're doing business above board and it changed the volumes and how everything was being traded. So I, th that's the main adjustment that I've made is like, I'll widen my stop a little bit and then I'll delay how quickly I'll lock in profit. Okay. And yeah. uh, what are the biggest mistakes you see traders making today? Um, It's the most boring lesson, but most impactful. And uh, I think it was representative last night. Uh, like how I played at the table, like know how many trades you're going to take for the week. Like, so my play, when we went in and played, uh, Troy, you were the vibe yesterday. Shoddy was like, listen, Shoddy talks a lot about defense. He showed it last night. It was like, hey, you going to play? Nope. Going back to the room. So I'm going to walk around. See you later. Not a dollar was dispersed on the table. Kudos to him, uh, the intelligent investor, right? <laughs> but for me, um, if you have read a book called A Man for All Markets by Edward Thorpe, He's the guy that broke Vegas and then broke investing for me. Like if I play and once I win three hands, I'm usually done. I got to a max of five yesterday and I was done. Tell me uh, how, how you got there. Hey, you know, but, but got a better red, red Panda for president. <laughs> got better, no, but listen, 66% of the tables. So I'm going with probability. I had one hand wide counter. I lost. Once I won my fifth hand, I was good. I see too many traders still taking too many trades like if you're at 10 to 15 trades in a week you are headed down a one-way road to hell you cannot over trade your way into financial freedom i've never seen it happen and i know everyone wants to say well the quants are trading thousands of times per second they're not even doing that anymore that was in 2008 9 10 11 12 they've adjusted their strategy so like knowing how many trades you can take and put probability in your favor is what is actually going to give you freedom. And I'll ask you this. If you've overtraded in this past year, have you made more money or less? Like we have to stop having conversations about semantics and well, this is my strategy. Are you doing better or less? Are you producing alpha or no? Like if you're not, you'll make way more money taking less trades. That's the number one out of everyone that I ever talked to that has done really well. They know within a range of maybe five or six trades, how many they're going to do per year and they stick to it. And everyone that has done really poorly, they've all overtraded. It's no way around it. Yeah. 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 Is there any yeah. NBA player that took like 29 threes in a game and it was like, he scored 75 points. And no, you have to know what's in your range. Yep. 